back. I hope you enjoyed those uh, videos on the uh, um, inertia, which is a big thing. I mean, inertia is a huge thing. It's 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 something's resistance to change is the inertia and in, in, in the mass push on. You know, if I push on some big old globby fat whale um, thing, it's not going to move very far unless I'm in the water with it. But then it still has some drag, pretty significant drag. Anyway, all right, so let's take a, so F equals MA, unit for force is a kilogram times an acceleration, and we call that a Newton. Okay, so in this, in this scenario here, what is the net force the men and the frictional force are exerting on the car? So we've got Two men, one push with 275 newtons this way, one with 395 newtons this way, one with 500, and then the frictional force working against them is pushing this way at 560 newtons. Okay, so let's see what that is. Hold on, let me see what we've got here. So the net force, the sum of the forces, mass equals acceleration. Is that the next answer? Okay. Then we'll find the acceleration and we'll work it out together. All right, so I've got this. So we'll, uh, let me set this up here. Okay, so let's take a peek. Look what we got. Sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Well, the sum of the forces is minus, this one's going negative, so it's minus 560 plus, are we still, yeah, let's make it a little bigger. Minus 560 plus 275, I'm not putting the units in yet, plus 395. Let me do that on my calculator real quick. Negative 560 plus 275 plus 395 is equal to 110. So the net force is 110 newtons. Now, okay, now we're getting froggy. We're feeling good. That's the net force is 110 newtons. Let's figure out what the acceleration is. If it's 815 kilograms, what's the acceleration? Let's do that. So the acceleration of this thing, if mass times acceleration is equal to 110 newtons, then the acceleration is equal to 110 newtons divided by the mass, which is 110 divided by 1850, because they told us that the mass was 1850 kilograms, which would be the same mass on the moon, but the weight would be a lot less. So we got 110 divided by 1850. Boom. 0 0.059 meters per second squared. That's not much of an acceleration. That's like six hundredths of a second. So after a hundred seconds, this thing would be going six six meters per second, which is roughly um, four miles an hour. So they're having to really push on that thing pretty hard. Okay, let's look at Newton's third law. This is really where we get into Newton's third law for every action, right? Everybody's favorite. Newton's third law, whenever one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts an oppositely directed force of equal magnitude on the first body. What? For every action, there is a, re is a reaction of the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. Okay, so if I push on, let's go back to this thing. Here's my coffee mug. If I push on this coffee mug with a force of 5 newtons, guess what? It's pushing back with a force of 5 newtons. Let's get it going at a constant velocity so there's no acceleration. Okay, so what's going on here? What are the forces working on this sheet of paper? Well, I'm pushing it, and I'm also pushing it against the frictional force, the kinetic frictional force. Okay, so the kinetic frictional force is pushing back, and I get the net force is equal to zero. But the if I push on this with a force of three newtons, 
this way, then the coffee mug, so if I'm pushing with a force of three newtons this way, then the mug is pushing with a force of negative three newtons this way. So I'd be going, well, how's it get to move? Because the net force on this thing, because we're not looking at the, the force on this object, uh, uh, or the 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 object pushing back on my hand. We're just looking at my hand pushing on the object. And if there's a net, net, enough net force there to overcome friction, the friction on the page, it'll slide. Okay? But notice, same magnitude, different direction. Opposite direction. All right. I think we got this. So here we go. Suppose that the magnitude of the force, the total mag the magnitude of the force is 36 newtons. If the mass of the spacecraft is 11,000 kilograms and the mass of the astronaut is 92 kilograms, what are the accelerations? Well, first of all, Newton's third law. Well, wherever one body exerts a force on the second body, the second body exerts an oppositely directed force of equal magnitude on the first body. So when they push on each other like that, whoops. How would we find those accelerations? I'll do it real fast. First of all, we just look at the astronaut. Here's the astronaut. I'll just call him A. He's his little point here. Now, we go back to that slide. Here it is. Look, the force acting on him is negative P. He's pushing on force with positive P, and there's a force of negative P acting on him. So let's figure out what his acceleration will be. And he's 92 kilograms. Good. All right. So P, in this case, equals negative 36 newtons. Mass of the astronaut is 92 kilograms. So, negative 36 newtons equals the mass of the astronaut times the acceleration. That's what I'm after. So, if I take negative 36 newtons divided by 92, I get some number. Negative 0.39 meters per second squared. That's its acceleration. That makes sense. It's going this way. The spaceship, on the other hand, at a P of positive 36 newtons is equal to 11,000 kilograms times the acceleration. Now, this acceleration is going to be really small. But it's going to be positive because this is a positive. That mass is always positive. So its acceleration will be 36 newtons divided by the 11,000 11, kilograms. And so its acceleration will be really small going that way. That's huge. And this explains why rockets work. Okay. So what I would like for you to do, uh, watch the uh, watch the next video on um, on the second and third law, or, or on the forces on an NFL football kick. Okay. And then I'll do the intro to momentum.